Ask Reddit by Cutapatoti. What's the biggest scam in tech that has become widely accepted? We have changed our terms of service click here to accept and continue using our services. Pray we don't modify them further. Trapping customers with subscriptions. Fuck Adobe for doing this. Why do I need to pay 12 euros per month for using an offline software? Printer cartridges. By the way, your magenta is low. I will now refuse to print in grayscale. Non-replaceable batteries. Any non-replaceable or non-upgradable hardware. Like, you suddenly find you need more memory in your Mac? Tough shit. Here's a new product, Uber. DoorDash. Amazon. It's so cheap and easy. One year later, sorry. We had to raise prices. Sorry, you have to pay for a membership now. Sorry, we had to make the app really confusing so you're not really sure what you're buying. Sorry, you have to wade through 1 million ads to find what you're looking for. Sorry, not sorry. Trying to use Amazon these days is impossible if you want a specific common brand of something odds are you have to worry about bootlegs that snuck into the Amazon warehouse somehow if you don't have a specific brand in mind good luck sorting through the hundreds of fansuck, kittens, gktoa type gibberish brands that are clearly all selling the same garbage someone found on AliExpress just with their gibberish name embroidered on it to make it worse Amazon is clearly too big to fail at this point but I wish it would it's such a bad service even if you don't look at the ethics of it. Everything as a service. I understand when it's something that requires constant updates to stay relevant. But what kills me is fucking startup founders who do this. They will launch, start getting some sales, then realize the sales at this rate will never be enough and eventually they just disappear. Make a fucking program and sell it for $10 for 5 years. Get your users first then see if they will be interested in a subscription model. Photoshop was a one payment program for decades. Apps and accounts for everything. Especially when it could just be a website with guest checkout. I'll never go to McDonald's again because you need an app to get their real, affordable non-absurd price, and last weekend I tried skiing at Pico or Magic, but they needed an account to be created online, and you could only buy a ticket through the account. They didn't let you just walk up to the ticket window and buy a ticket. Ridiculous. This pisses me off at baseball game sporting events. I wanted to give my 75 year old uncle tickets to a Cubs game. But he needs a smartphone to access the MLB app to receive tickets and enter the game. McAfee who in the hell actually needs it? Windows own virus systems have actually become quite capable. Data caps, literally not a technical reason for it. Throttling may make sense if they get overloaded but caps are literally just money grabs. It's fun when you pay to remove the cap, and they randomly with no notice, decide to remove that from your account. And you get a bill saying you've gone over your data cap. Planned obsolescence. Companies need that profit margin, and they will use very underhanded methods to make sure your appliances electronics will get replaced by their new models when they come out. UTE Prince has addressed the manufactured goods so I'll tackle SW and batteries. Battery capacity is reduced a little every charge discharge cycle, and worse if you do either operation rapidly. Something like 1000 cycles it gets noticeable and falls off more rapidly. Performance falls off because modern software design has become hilariously bloated with junk and extraneous ads that waste insane amounts of data power processing. Barnack in my day I, I, I or still in aerospace to some extent, every bit you wanted to transmit was precious. Say as little as needed and be as efficient as possible. Now everyone builds on extra abstraction layers that each have a processing tax. Paying subscriptions and never owning shit. Free app with an app subscription required instead of a decent upfront purchase. I can't believe I don't see this in here, but the fact that most tech companies use their end users as testers is wild. 
tons of the time you get something released that like, half works, and the end users or customers are used to find and fix bugs. It's everywhere man. Blame sales team selling features before they exist, and PMs over promising before consulting with their engineers, or worse just ignoring their input. Every developer engineer would love to take pride in their work and make it the best solution product possible. But the non-tech people higher up who sign the paychecks push for release speed over quality a lot of the time. The way expansions packs work with games now, or at least a lot I play. It seems like it used to be that an expansion meant essentially almost a new game with lots of unique material, but now I feel lucky if any Sint one is noticeable at all. Not to mention day one releases. I miss the old way of expansion packs because it was like taking a great game I already loved and giving me even more of it when I thought it was over. Like I had finished my slice of cake and then they handed me a second piece. Tenuous link but BMW subscription service. The options are already in the car but you have to pay a monthly fee to unlock them. This isn't new though. BMW just did a crap job at packaging it. Toyota has been doing it for ages. They have all the wiring looms and many of the components in place, but pull the fuses and blank off the switches in lower tier models unless you pay for dealer fitted options or buy a higher edition of the same car. Annual licensing fees for programs, software, apps, that already costs hundreds of dollars to begin with. Bro, VMware is crippling the entire it industry right now after their new masters, Broadcom, decided to increase license fees by 3-8x for no reason other than fuck you that's why. Our fees went from $15,000 per year to $45,000 and we are on the lower end. Throw Cisco in that with their acquired DNA 3 year licensing with every hardware purchase model for a DNA server you don't want nor need. Clearly built for larger scale industries with its 256 GB RAM hardware requirements and $80,000 price tag. This shit is a fucking racket, and too complex for old politicians to understand to do anything about it. Are we in everything? Just leave me alone with this self-learning auto-replicating language adapting shit. I just want my Chrome to load websites quickly not analyze my text entry patterns. I think it's that RE is being applied to anything remotely using any sort of algorithm. It's like saying Google now has RE. You type what you're searching for and it finds websites for you that's what it's always done. This toaster is powered by RE. You push a button and it warms your toast for you and with smart tech, it releases the bread after a set time. Your lights are now RE. You flip a switch and Ali sends an electrical signals to every light in the network and they turn on. It's largely just a buzzword. McAfee. In-app purchases to unlock features. In apps. In cars, BMW and a few others. In games. Digital media in general. Yeah, I get why people would go in on it, convenience and the like, but for all the money we spend on it, we don't own a goddamn thing. Companies can go tits up, breakups, mergers, licenses can expire, digital storefronts are shuttered, etc. At any point the game movie song TV show whatever, that you paid for, can be rendered unusable and unobtainable with zero notice and fewer ways to get it back. It's been especially big in video game circles with various digital storefronts being shut down. The Nintendo 3DS and Wii U stores just got the axe, announced to be shut down. The Xbox 360 store is set to go by by this year, or held up only by way of extreme backlash. People raised unholy hell when Sony announced they were going to kill the PS3 store, and there will be no way get those games back unless you set sail for the Buccaneer Bay. As the saying goes, if buying isn't owning, piracy isn't stealing. Printer ink prices. Subscription based ink are tech. We are as we speak moving into an era where physical hardware built into the car you parted with $50k for is gated behind a subscription. 
pretty much the whole AAA video games industry. Releasing bugged games. Making games with DLC in mind or cutting content to sell it to you. Endless sequels, no more risks, creativity or originality. Microtransactions, gambling and subscriptions. Online single player games. You don't own games anymore and can't sell them. Quality of hardware, especially controllers, has gone down significantly. I don't know if it is accepted but people really have no other choice but to take it. Yeah, I've always had playing video games as a hobby and used to buy games on launch. In the last 10 years I gave up on that. Now I buy games 2 or 3 years later when it's in the bargain bin and all the DLC and extras have come out. I don't play multiplayer competitive games anymore and it's working great so far. I have money left to spend on other hobbies this way play video games now occasionally. Having to buy the same game multiple times to play it on a different platform. In some cases it's even worse. I bought a game on the Oculus, through the headsets app store, only to find that on my desktop, the Oculus app says I would have to buy it again to play the game on the Oculus through my computer. I'm playing it on the Oculus either way, but one is processing it on the headset, the other is processing it on the computer and streaming it to the headset. They consider this two consoles and therefore charge for it twice. A new iPhone being released every year and Apple convincing people it has a ton of improvements. 